Last year, um, the John Wall dance became a pop cultural phenomenon. Um, can you discuss a little bit about how that came about, and were you surprised about its elevation? Yeah, I was surprised. You know, it's just, you know, I like to have fun with my brothers, and we dance all the time. And I just, they told me to do a, do a dance for uh, Midnight Madness, and me, DeMarcus, with DeMarcus' brother danced first, and then Eric, but they were scared of heights. They was up there, and <laughs> so um, I just got up there, and uh, they played the right song at the right time, and I did it. And I didn't ever think it was going to blow up to be that big, but, you know, anything you do in Kentucky, you, like you said, you're a star or playing a basketball team, it gets blown out of proportion, and you see everybody just ran with it. So, do you have a John Wall 2.0 plan? <laughs> NBA John Wall 2.0 dance plan? Oh, uh, no, I haven't done any other dances or anything. I might just keep that one around with it. <laughs> when you were, um, Rod Strickland was mentoring you a little bit. Um, when you came out, uh, obviously you were very young, but um, people were, they thought he was the second coming of Bill Sh uh, Bob Cousy or Magic. And, and he obviously didn't have the career that he thought he did. Did he ever talk to you about that and maybe the, the Pratt Falls? Of being so young and so good in the NBA? Uh, no, I never, I never really got into detail. You know, really ask him how did he, how did he have a downfall, or anything like that. I just, you know, try to learn as much as I can. You know, he showed me how different ways to get to the basket. You know, basically he knocked down that mid-range jump shot as the best as any guard I've seen. So that's one thing I'm trying to develop into my game. And he was showing me so much that I learned that I always, you know, call him at certain times and ask for advice or. Ask for when his highlight tape so I can see certain ways and like he's one of the best finishers around the past as a guard. So it's still a lot I learned from from on and off the court. Now, yeah. What's the hardest part about a day like today for you? Is it just basketball or is there anything else that goes into it for you? Uh, no, just basically just basketball. You know, I love to wake up and play basketball. So like I said, I had the opportunity to put the ball in my hand when some kids are, are uh, diagnosed with disease or anything and they can't play basketball. You just thank God had the opportunity to wake up and play the sport that you love. So it's basically basketball today. Going back to your jump shot, are you, are you making any sort of uh, changes to your form? Is it just kind of more repetition? How do you think you're going to kind of improve it? Well, basically, you know, just finding one. Like, I think I'm just getting better reps. Up, you know, more is just getting more reps up and make my jump shot faster. But I feel like at certain times I shoot a good way for like 10 minutes and next way I change it up. Mm -hmm. So basically just getting consistent and keeping it at that one shot and just keep knocking it down. You said you talked to some NBA players. Uh, anyone in particular who gave you good advice or something that you held firm uh, going forward? Oh yeah, all of them give you good advice because they all been most of them been through the college level and some of them just went straight from high school. But you know the one advice LeBron took was uh, don't try little to all the hype. You know just go out there and play basketball and enjoy the game and be happy to be out there to play. So that's basically what him and Coach Gallo told me when I was going through the season process. Following that up, uh, did you have a favorite player growing up or even someone in the league today that you try to smear your game off of? Uh, growing up, everybody liked that. I was, you know, little kid with braids. Tough, had a crossover, so that's everybody my ass. But yeah, you know, I like guys like LeBron, Derrick Rose, Chris Paul, and those are the guys I like now. That that fandom of Allen Iverson is that did that kind of have an impact on you choosing with Reebok, you know, to go after that, or any impact? Uh, no, not really. No, I didn't really have any impact. You know, I talked to him a little bit while I was down there, but I really didn't have any impact. Uh, impact was basically uh, me wanting to go what's best for me and what can help build my brand and make me more marketable and having a, a better image. And I feel like, you know, we probably the uh, best choice for me to go to at the time. The shoes you wore today, are those a signature John Wall? Ah, uh, yeah. That's <laughs> that's Did you become a part of this organization? What are your expectations for the company? Uh, you know, if I get chosen, you know, first the kids are coming in and and uh, blending in with my players, you know, that's the key is to find a family man, you know, become like brothers like we did in Kentucky, and basically just everybody getting on one page, listen to the coaching staff, and I'm going to learn as much as I can in certain short part of time, but try to get everybody on the same page and win games, you know, I know it's not going to come in uh, a year or two that we get to the playoffs, but, you know, the goal is to become an all-star, win rookie of the year, and uh, get us to the playoffs, and hopefully be a championship contender. Now, Reebok, you know, as compared to maybe Nike, they don't have as many clients. Um, can you just talk a little bit more about why you thought that was the best fit for you in terms of kind of your shoe deal? Uh, I just felt like, you know, I could be a face of the basketball side of there, and that was the key for you know, basically, you know, doing, trying to do with LeBron and, and uh, Kobe Bryant and, and KJ and those guys, you know, they were with Adidas and they were with Nike, you know, they had their commercials and big time advertisement. You know, I feel like at the time Reebok needed a guy like that and, and I was the right guy for that opportunity. Chow, what are your plans between now and the NBA draft? Well, basically just working out and really uh, getting in better shape. You know?
Uh, basically, just keep working and getting better, not taking no days off. You have four other uh, teammates from Kentucky that are likely first round picks, along with yourself. Um, have you been communication with them during this process, and what have you guys been talking about? Oh, uh, yeah, I talked to them all the time. You know, I asked them how their workouts are going. I talked to DeMarc yesterday, I was going to try to go see him, but he was like an hour and 30 minutes away, so I uh, cut that short. But yeah, we talked, we keep in contact, and you know, um, like, see how everybody doing and see how the workouts are going. Where do you plan to be on draft night? Is there a memorable suit that you plan to wear? Do you plan to be in uh, New York for it? Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm saying it. Hopefully, I'll be in New York. the first time you've been in the Verizon Center, and is it the first time you've been in D.C.? Uh, yeah, this is my first time in Verizon Center, but I've been in D.C. a couple of times for uh, two or three tournaments, but never got enough time to really explore and walk around and see the city. Have you had any fans since you've been here, since yesterday? Uh, I went out in Georgetown a little bit last night. It was kind of dead, but... <laughs> <laughs> John, if someone's been living under a rock the last three years, how would you describe your game? Um, uh, open-court type player, get my teammates involved, like to get to the basket, like to make the big plays in the world to win. How would you? How do you think your game is going to translate to the NBA, which is a lot different from college? I feel like uh, it translates a lot better because there's more space, you know, more open-court. You can't touch when you drive to the basket, so you got certain rules that can't get away with what you got in college, but I think I still did a good job in college and hope, you know, my goal is to come in and do the same thing I did, but even better in the NBA. Were you playing the team Summer League? Were you playing the Wizards Summer League this summer? Uh, it depends on whatever team whatever team I get drafted by, that's the team I'll, I'll probably play in the Summer League. Do you think uh, there's any point guards in the NBA that can match your athleticism as a point guard? Uh, I don't know. There's guys that play. You know, you got Derrick Rose that's pretty athletic. You got Rondo, that's a sneaky athlete. So this guy's athletic, but you know you can't you can't uh, base your talent all off athletic because every guy in the NBA is, is athletic. So you just can't get by with being athletic. You got to be a smart player and also have skills. So that's my key is to get better at my skill set. This Wizards team only has six players under contract. None of them are 30 years old. So whatever team you go to, does that have kind of an effect of how you treat your teammates as a point guard, dealing with younger guys versus like you know, older veterans? I feel like whatever team I go to, I think, you know, most of the guys are going to be pretty young, not too old. So we basically be on the same page and can talk the same way. But at certain times, you have to put your foot down and, you know, put them in, put them in their place. And they got to do the same thing to me, you know, make sure I'm in the right place and make sure I'm getting better or in the gym working out. And that's the key is being a leader. If you're leading the team in scoring and, like, assists, could, could there really be any rookie hazing? <laughs> they can't haze you, right? You know, they can try anything, so <laughs> it all depends. Um, there's a pretty big basketball fan about nine blocks away that lives there uh, in President Obama. Um, I know you had spoken with him last year. Can you touch a little bit on that experience? And, and also, um, he's been to one game, uh, I think, rooting for the Bulls. If you get a chance to actually see meet him again, would you? And you're selected by the Wizards. Would you commit him to come uh, watch you play? Oh, uh, hopefully I get picked by the Wizards, and then I do. Yeah, I want to come to the games, you know. But before before that, I want to play him in that game of horse. You know, I challenge to a game of one on one. <laughs> that's the president. I guess he back down here and want to play. So I convince him into that first, and then you know, hopefully invite him to some games. <laughs> Wizards uh, owner said that there may be a change in uniforms coming up, possibly going to a, a base of red color. But who knows if uh, you had it here, what color would you say uh, you look? You know, you want? What do you think you look best in? Uh, I don't know. That, that's his opinion. If I get picked, you know, that's his decision. But red would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> One more question. Well, uh, since you left Kentucky, this is for the Kentucky fans. Can you just talk about your, uh, what you're going to miss most about being in Kentucky and the whole rough experience, please. Uh, you want to really know the story? <laughs> uh, really, I would miss the fans. You know, first of all, the fans made it feel like uh, those are the best fans in the world that I've ever uh, seen. You know, the 24,000 packed in every game, no matter if it was a D1, a D3 school that had 100 people at that school, they were still going to be there, especially the coaching staff. You know, they did a great job of this year of making our team come together, uh, treating us like a family. And basically, the school, I love the school a lot. You know, they had good academics there. The fans is crazy. And, and it just the one moment I'm going to miss the most is walking outside and walking at Lodge and having about 15, 20 cars waiting for people to do autographs. So that's basically it. Gabe Simon, you got a call? Yeah, Celtics. Celtics. Thanks, guys.